Praise God. I'm going to read a couple of portions of scripture and move quickly into the word. Um, my main text will be 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, 1 through 6. Very familiar portion, but I'm going to premise it with Jeremiah 12 and 5. Very important to understand the prophetic statement here that applies to us. If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustedest, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? Let me surmise. If you can't make it when it's this easy, you're not going to make it. If you can't make it to church now, you're probably not going to make it. If you can't get a prayer life now, you're probably not going to get one. If you can't get committed to God right now in this environment, I mean, I hate to break it to you. It's not even my place. It's the word of God. You need to take really good stock of yourself and find out where I'm really at with God. Not according to friends and the radio and your TV and all that, but according to the word of God. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. So I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings of apple pie in the sky. And if the right guy gets in, the, it wins the election or this, all of a sudden everything's going to smooth out, be hunky-dory, peace, love. and No, it's not. Are you all ready? You, you want the truth tonight? You want something else? There's a non-Holy Ghost filled church somewhere around here you can go to. This know also that in the last days, perilous times, perilous times, perilous times shall come. For, this word for is an assigning. It is a, assigning a reason of the why of the perilous times. This is why things are going to be perilous. That's what that for, it's not just a three-letter insignificant word. It's, it's, it applies the context. Are you with me? People, or it says men, people, shall be lovers of their own selves. We don't want to call that out. We say words like you're selfish. Right? But lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boastful, proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents, unthankful in the month of Thanksgiving. Hello. Unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. This is why perilous times. We're surrounded with people like this and all of that. We got to deal with some of this in our own self. Fierce. Wait, wait. Without natural fancy, they're fierce, despisers of those that are good. Hello. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Welcome to America. Now, listen, this is, the, this is speaking of Christians. This applies to us. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. That's hard. Sister Tia, that's hard. That's telling someone that maybe you know for 20 years that's messing around and playing around and not only jeopardizing their soul, but they have no problem jeopardizing yours. You at some point, you try, I choose God over you. I heard, I heard but Denver said amen. And that's hard to say amen because some of these people are family that we love with our fleshly heart. Are you hearing me? But denying the power thereof. Can I say this? One of the worst things on the planet is not sinners. It's fake Christians. 
it's 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 fake. It's 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 it, what's even worse than a fake Christian is someone that was once filled with the Holy Ghost that's turned their back on Christianity. That no longer takes church attendance serious. That no longer takes the Word of God serious. That no, they got all these things to talk about, but it's never God. It's never the Bible. It's never, and that. Can I tell you, we're in perilous times right now. And it's perilous to you and I because it pulls on our heart and messes with our mind and it makes us question our commitment to God. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts. Jesus your help. I believe that the church, that your spirit has been tremendously long suffering for thousands of years. Lord, we are facing a time like your word declares that are perilous, frivolous little. struggle with the choice but we will find that place but as for me but as for me but as for me and mine we will serve the Lord hallelujah let's give the Lord a hand praise as we're seated hallelujah praise God understand the word perilous, the word perilous brings, and in the context, the idea of reducing strength to weaken. And it's home, we're family. How many feel drained by the constant battle with the world? Living in it and not being of it is right. Which you can't tell me walking into your house through the door at the end of the day. And I have no idea what you're doing with the sound, but that's not working. There you go. Put that back. Um, you walk in. You put your stuff down and sit down and it's. Whew. Can anybody say amen to that? Why? Because it's a constant battle. And then I'll be honest. There's some of you, you don't get to go home and get a release from the battle. Some of your battles in your house. Mm -hmm. So understand perilous times denotes a reducing of strength, a, a weakening, a losing of power. First Corinthians talks about there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. There are distractions, folks. There are things that are going to happen to you. There are problems. There are, there, there are going to be opportunities. There are going to be situations where it's going to be so easy to step away. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Now, I'm going to be honest. It may not be a physical place. It may be that secret place of prayer. And that does not diminish that place. In fact, some of you need to get back in there and knock the cobwebs off in that place. Uh, you need to re-moisten the wood of the altar in there with some tears and find that altar in your home again of prayer. Now, I will say, and I want to give credit to Sister Tia and Jacob for a reminder of this message. I was out to lunch on Sunday, and Sister Tia made a comment about a message she remembered, and I'm going to be honest with you. I thought about it, and I, I couldn't even think of it when she mentioned it on Sunday. But as I was studying and reading some of my notes, I couldn't believe it. This thing popped up in front of me, and I felt this quickening. It was like, no way. Okay, God. So the image I'm about to show you is disturbing. 
It has caused uncontrollable anxiety and stress. It is an image that is responsible for outbursts of anger and even rage. It has been known to induce sweating, cursing, reckless driving, and even violent outbursts. Sudden searching and borrowing and even buying. This image has affected relationships, friendships, and even marriages. It has sent teenagers and adults alike into fits of depression. It has even brought along suicidal thoughts and behaviors. It has caused sudden conversations and interaction with complete strangers as you've looked for a remedy to the situation. Please understand that this image is just an image. It is not truly indicative of an actual condition that you may have. So before we show the image, we at Souls Harbor are not responsible for your reaction to this image. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Are you really sure you're ready? Sister Loretta, I know you're listening, or if you're not listening right now, you'll be listening tomorrow. It is the image of a battery that is about to die with the symbol of it needing to be plugged in to the power source. We shy away from making comments about fear. We know, and I'll, I may possibly say this later, that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But the Bible also says something in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 31 and 32. Because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's one thing to place yourself there and at his mercy and want his direction and want his guiding but it's another to ignore him, turn your back on him, however, and to fall into his hands. But the next verse says something that coincides with my message. But call to remembrance the former days. I'm talking to some backsliders. Some of you parents and some of us need to flat look at some kids and you are a backslider. Because if you don't tell them, They'll never think it's serious enough and that you don't even really care to confront the situation. And it's a sad day that when we see that image on our phone or on our car or on anything else and we will run to remedy it as fast as we can, it compels us to move. It compels us to act. But yet we see somebody and that condition, well, it'll be all right. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Let me tell you something. In order to be illuminated, you must be plugged in. And the reason you're not and the reason you backslid and the reason you're is you are no longer plugged in. In a light must be connected to a power source. Matthew 5 14 declares, Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. What happens if you were once illuminated and now you're walking in darkness? You're spreading darkness into everyone around you. Let me tell you, I'm going to be plain. One of the most bothersome things as a pastor is to watch someone new come into church that wants God to hang around with a dark person. When they come in, I got hopes for them to get the Holy Ghost. I got hopes for them to get right. And I can't get that family to teach a Bible study. I can't get that person to take church seriously. And instead of helping that person rise up, they drag them down. You want to get under somebody? You want to get under someone that's chasing Jesus' skin? Act like that. And if you could sit here and not have some righteous indignation while you watch that happen, check your plugged in status. But sadly enough, through corruption, immorality, and sin, people just disconnect themselves from God. They may come a few times, but pretty soon the salvation plan 
well, I obeyed a few things, I'm good, and then the next thing you know, they disconnect from the church. Why? Why is this world progressively getting worse? Well, I just read to you why. But the problem is, 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 is it's not just perilous times, but there's a condemning. We don't like that. Oh, you're judging me. Look, someone judging you is not the problem. If you're judged and condemned, then there's a problem. People's reaction to hearing the word of God. God, I had a situation that happened. I'm just trying to have dinner. It's a night off. Can a pastor have a night off? I'm hanging out with family and friends, and there just happened to be somebody there who, you know, that they're, they're not faithful to church. In every sense in the word, they have the, an exterior of being a Christian. They're not Christians. That may offend you. That may bother you when I say something like that. But in all honesty, they're, they're, they're a bigger problem than they are a help. Because they have a form of influence. And I'm sitting, I'm just trying to eat. Subject came up and, you know, they got absolutely no reason to miss church. And they told me, well, pile on, pile it on me. Like, no. And because the intricate details of it, I'm like, Psh, you, and this is my inner dialogue. You've been in church longer than me. You've had way more advantages when it comes to the kingdom of God than me. You are surrounded. You, you've had more opportunities than I could shake a stick at. The last thing you need is me. In fact, you know what? This is my night off. You better get plugged in. You can't blame mama. You can't blame daddy. You, you can't blame pastor. You can't blame the church. You chose to get unplugged. You're choosing to go to hell. You're choosing to quit. You're choosing to lie to yourself and think you're okay. And the indictment that got under my skin was they sat there and talked about someone's household, how they did this, how they did that. And I could ask them, who's preaching next Sunday? Who's singing? Who's doing? And they couldn't tell me a thing about the church but they knew a bunch of details about somebody's house. Let me tell you, we will indict ourselves. We will condemn ourselves if we don't watch what we're doing and watch what we're saying. Listen to this. And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. And men love darkness. We don't like to tell people that. You're backslid, you've fallen into darkness, and you're leading people astray. There comes a time that we got to stand for God or we're not, rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Notice it said were. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. It amazes me. And it's, it's a wonderful thing, and I never want to lose my new convertness. Now, let me tell you something. There's been times in my life that I, wait a minute, what's going on with me? Where do I think I got this thing cornered? Where do I think I got this church thing down? Wait a minute. You know what? I, I still want to enter his courts and his gates with thanksgiving and praise. I still want to come in here and behave myself right. Wait a minute. Don't let me think I got this thing right. Wait a minute. No, I need to get plugged into this thing. I need to make sure my praise and my worship isn't predicated on how you're reacting, on who's singing. I'm here because I need to get plugged in. I'm here because I need it. I don't want to be sitting around my dinner table with my kids or my family or my friends or teaching a Bible study and be not honest and real with the person. Say, Wait a minute. You better get that right. You better get back to being faithful. You better get plugged in. In order to do what's right, We've got to be connected to that power source. We must abide, abide, abide in the things of God. We must remain connected and plugged in. The Bible even tells us in Acts, in, Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Let me tell you something. God didn't give you the Holy Ghost for goosebumps. And I tell you something right now. You don't meet, need me to give you the right, but you need me to give you a reminder. You need to turn around and start asking some people that claim Christianity. Christianity, when's the last time you spoke in tongues? 
When's the last time you moved in the Holy Ghost? Or, or better yet, when's the last time the Holy Ghost could move you? Don't come in here on a Sunday and have streaming tears on your face. Lift up your hands and turn around and miss the next service and nothing happened. You're mocking God. You're mocking him. You're mocking the church. God is not mocked. Jesus goes on and he says in John 15 and 5, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth, abide, abide, abide. Stays connected in me. And I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. You want to know some people are fruit. No, I'm, I'm good with God. You haven't, you haven't done a thing. There's no fruit from your life. There's no Christian. Everything else, you're eating, you're drinking, you're doing this, you're doing that. But when it comes to the things of God, there's no fruit. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3, listen to this. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. When's the last time? When's the last time you were an altar? Completely engulfed and flowing, plugged in in the Holy Ghost. That is not just an attribute of the new. It is the conviction of the stalwart saint of God committed to the end. Getting plugged in and staying plugged in is vital. We can't allow our battery to go dead. We all do it. We all say it. We look at our phones or we look at our iPads or, or we look and realize, wait a minute. And when we see that symbol on our phone, get low. Oh, wait a minute. Whatever I'm doing, I'm going to stop and I'm going to plug it in. I need an outlet. I need a charger. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, 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 it happens in my house all the time. Can I borrow your charger? I kind of think of those inversions. Because I am kind of that way. I hate to break it to you. I'm not always the nice guy. Go get your own. If mine's low, oh no. Oh no. Right? I need power. But that person who's allowed it to go low need to get to the place that I need power. I need to plug in. I got to get desperate with this thing. I got to wait a minute. I understand the metaphor of the phone, but let me tell you something right now. If your power is getting low and you're finding yourself unable to fight, if you're finding yourself easily allowing things, up, you need to get desperate. You need to start sweating. You need to, oh, oh I'm watching my power. You ever done it? You ever been on a phone? Hey, listen, uh, 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 I'm going to have to let you go. I got to, I'm down to 1%. Listen, I don't have time to chit-chat. Let me tell you what I say. I'm on 1%. On. Why is it that our phones bring a desperation? But when it comes to the things of God. I've seen it. I've watched it in airports. I've seen it in my own home. And I've been there myself. You ever, there's nothing worse than driving down the road. Your charger's in your suitcase, and the one you had in your car broke, and now it's not charging. And your GPS, as you're pulling into a city that you need, and it's fixing to die. You're like, oh, let me just get there. Let me just. I got to get plugged in. I need some more power. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that dreaded warning. It happened to me just the other day. I had my, got some little wireless eye earbuds that's right so when I'm at the gym doing my little jog listening to whatever and I'm going and all of a sudden it was coming down to the end and a little warning came on her beep beep battery low please recharge 
preaching comes back on them. Okay. Beep, beep, beep. Battery low. Please recharge. I'm like, oh, man. Let's just get finished. I was, I was listening to some preaching on YouTube or something like that. And I'm just, come on, get, get done with your point. Get done with your point. Get done with your point. Battery low. Please recharge. I think it said it four times, and all of a sudden, boom. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We want power. We'll even argue who gets to plug in their phone first. <laughs> we start arguing about, my phone's lower than yours. My phone's lower. Can you imagine what would happen if we came into the church with the mentality, wait a minute, my battery's low. You know what? I've been struggling. My spirit's not where it should be. I haven't been faithful. I haven't showed up for the things I said I would do. I, God's gave me the ability to sing. I haven't sang in years. God's gave me the ability to preach. And I've tabled it. God's given me the ability to teach Bible study. And you've done that. And the battery said, you ought to run to an altar. Get put it. Jesus, get me back in this thing. Get my, back, get my power bill back up. I'm going to die like my phone's going to die. A couple of weeks ago, I'm doing something. I'm doing some reading or something in the house, and Erica comes running in. Oh no, my car won't start. You know, I'm I'm calm. I'm not the one late for work. I'm just chilling. I go out there, and yeah, your battery's dead. So she's freaking out, getting ready. I don't know. She's gonna call an Uber. It was like a month ago. I don't know what's time. And I said, No, just hop in the truck. I'll take you, and I'll. Get your battery fixed. When, when the power's gone, we're in problems. When we let the power go out, things shut down. We don't allow our cars to go without a battery. We don't let our phones run down. We don't want our houses disconnected from the, oh, they're going to cut the power off. Oh, uh, you pay that bill. Well, well we guess we ain't going to do this. We're not going to do that. We better get the lights on. We better get the heat on. Why? We start to realize there's just some things we got to have. Can you imagine if we started treating the things of God and the Spirit of God and being plugged in like all those say, I can't go another the day I can't go another I gotta get plugged in he's coming he's coming soon these are perilous times I gotta get powered up hallelujah phone believe it or not in this power thing that I'm talking about should really it makes a great comparison of how we should treat our relationship God with God. Because I, I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, but my phone's always with me. It's nearby when I'm sleeping. I don't leave home without it. I was called someone the other day, and all of a sudden I'm talking to him, and I said, well, What are you doing? Well, I'm in the bathroom. I guess you're not the only one that goes to the bathroom with your phone. goes to work with us. We have it to where we can hear it when it goes off so we hear every phone call. In fact, we feel sick if we realize we left it somewhere. We did that just the other night. We were celebrating Jacob's birthday and we were playing this game. And we got up to walk away and he looked up and he saw that he left his phone and he turned around and went and grabbed it and turned and looked at me and we both looked at each other. <gasps> that would have been bad. And he had, he had this sick, like somebody stole his wallet look. Hello? Because uh, isn't that what we do? Well, our, our, our phones are our wallets today for a lot of people. It's likely some of us, if we left our wallet, we'd run a good set of tires to go back there and find out. I said it right. Why? Hey, that's important. Can you imagine? If we got to that place with God, uh -uh, I'm not going to go a day. I, I love you, honey. I love you, sweetheart. But I got to get me plugged in. I, I got to make sure, you know, I get your phone and I get your wallet. But I better get plugged into this Jesus stuff. I can't afford to lose out. I can't lose out emotionally and actually be lost because I let the power go out. We freak out if our phone's not in our purse or our pocket. Think about it. 
We expect others to stay powered up and connected too. How many of you about ready to get a divorce? When you get home, you can't get a hold of your spouse. What do you got a cell phone for? So we can get a hold of you. Phone dies. You got no way. The next thing you know, you get the phone plugged in. It starts powering up. They say, no. And the whole story's happened in your life because your spouse lets you know it, it's over. Whatever you. Or you're grounded for the rest of your life. Where have you been? You're not answering your phone. They call it, it died. Why, why does it get that stream? Because we have the ability to stay connected. We have the potential to have the power to stay connected, which means, listen, if we have that, we should always be in touch. I'm going to tell you right now, God is not going to run out of ways for us to stay connected. His power don't run out. So if you're not plugged in and you don't have his power, guess who unplugged? The problem is, is we have to make him a priority. We have got to treat him, and I'm Lord forgive me, with even more reverence than we do our phones, than we do our cars, than we do our houses. Some of you would flat flip out on the power company if you paid the bill and walked in, it was out, and they had it over. You turn around, I want retribution, you dirty rat. You cost me everything in my refrigerator. You cost me everything. We want, but yet we'll walk around. Ah. God can't use me today. I'm not plugged in. Nah, I ain't got nothing to pray about today. I got, is this okay? Is this on? Can, can, I, <laughs> if we would make a priority out of God, if we would. If, what would happen if we treated our relationship with God like we do our phones? Our, hello? How would our spiritual, how would your spirituality change if all of a sudden you made sure you always had a full battery? That you always stayed power? How would your life change if you constantly made sure you're connected? What would happen if you kept your spiritual battery charged up? If you constantly were making sure that he's my priority. I'm not leaving no home without him. I'm not going nowhere without him. Even if it's to the bathroom, Jesus, walk with me. I'm not going to go nowhere, hang around no one. Dude, I got to make sure, hallelujah, I got him with me. We reach around, search for our wallet, search for our phone. We, uh, we, I got to find out, Jesus, walk with me. Oh, I got to get plugged in uh, to the power source. In all honesty, nothing works unless it's plugged in. I know. But I got a battery. It's at 85%. It's at 90%. I got time. I'm going to get a little personal here. Cause she likes to run her car on empty. And I like to run mine on full. And I have found that it costs exactly the same. <laughs> Are you hearing me? We're all, well, I get we're all different. Can, can you imagine? I can't run living for God on empty. I'm not going to be a good pastor. I'm not going to be a good husband. I'm not going to be a good dad. I'm not going to be a good father. I'm, wait a minute. I, Jesus, there's too much riding on me being plugged in. There's too much riding on, on what's going to happen because if I lose power, everybody around me is going to be affected. We have constantly, you know, let me say this. We can't be spiritually outdone by that pink energizer bunny. There's got to be something about us getting an attitude about our spirituality. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going. That's why the Word of God tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Why? I'm going to be plugged in. I'm going to keep getting plugged in. 
I'm going to keep getting plugged in. I, you know what? If I don't keep praying, she knows. And if she don't keep praying, I know. Great. That, that's wonderful. But unless we say something about it, it ain't going to mean nothing. Oh, babe. I ought not have said that. I need to go pray for a bit. She goes, yeah. You need to have a love, love in your relationship with someone to say, you know what? I don't hurt your feelings, but you're not in a good place. I love you enough, and I haven't heard you pray through in a long time. In fact, every conversation we have, I haven't heard you say one thing about God today. You talk about this, you talk about that. Honey, when's the last time you plugged in? In the context of the phone, that pray without ceasing really means to stay plugged in. Are you hearing me? I don't know about you. My iPad stays plugged in. The only time it's not for any length of time is here. I just keep it plugged in. There's no reason for me to let it go low. There's only I only let it go low maybe once a month so that the battery stays, and this is, it may not even be true with how they come in advance, is to bring it all the way down so I can fill it all the way up so that it doesn't lose its ability to hold a full charge. That's it. But when it comes to us, we need to pray, connect, charge it up, stay plugged in. How long can your phone go without being plugged in? Day and a half? Two days? Did you go how many days without praying? Well, I come to church. Ah, wait a minute. But did you plug in? Because you can be, anybody been around the house? And you're like, where's so-and-so? And you can be in a house with people and be completely disconnected, disengaged, and completely separate from them. You want to see parents all of a sudden get a little concerned? Little Johnny ain't acting like little Johnny loves us anymore. He's more connected with what's out there than what's in here. And that's what happens in the church. You can come in here, but did you get connected? Did you get plugged in? Are you fully charged? Are you hearing me? 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what recon reconcile means? It means to reconnect. Reconnect. Replug in. Get plugged back in. Uh, it's been a while. You've, you've been separated from God, but he's provided an opportunity for reconciliation to reconnect. He wants you to get back connected. Get back plugged in. Uh, get plugged in and stay plugged in. In John 15 and 5, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. Bring us more fruit. I got to get plugged in. Because if you don't stay plugged in, soon you won't be able to do anything. You're like a dead phone. No power. You're just a lump of plastic and electronics. Are you hearing me? Because just showing up to church, believing is not enough. you got to get plugged in. And it said it came to pass while Paul was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Well, then, well, how were you baptized? And he said, John's baptism. Then, Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. John said that. It's okay, great, you can be a believer. That's wonderful. But he's going to tell you how to get plugged in. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now, how many of you think you believe you got to get plugged into the Holy Ghost? The fact is, unless you take time to get really connected, committed, and plugged in, you will never truly be powered by the Holy Spirit. And you can't be a witness of him and his power until you receive the Holy Ghost. But you shall receive power. Everybody say power. 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Plugging into that power, spiritual power cord, just like you do with your phone, is the same thing that I'm getting plugged into the things of God. Just can't show up and walk around as a believer. Get plugged in. You can't walk by your Bible every now and then and think you're just going to buy some sort of special osmosis, start getting the word in your heart and your mind. I, I saw this little clip that went by the other day uh, on Facebook of this, this, this little kid sitting in school, and he's turning the pages on his workbook, and he's going like this. Son, you're going to have to read that thing. You can't just show up and sit through worship service and call that praise and worship. You can't walk by an altar and think you've got empowerment of the Holy Ghost. It's not just going to happen because you're nearby. You've got to get plugged in. You, 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 you got to get plugged plugged in. You, you have to purposely say, wait a minute, I've come to draw close to God and get plugged in. I need that power in my life. In fact, there's a story in the Bible in Acts, it says uh, in Acts 19, right after the Holy Ghost incident, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, chief priest, which did so. And <clears throat> The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? Pretty serious situation here. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. You know why? You have no power. They had no power. They, they, they'd seen it, they thought about it, they thought they liked it, they thought they could copy it and replicate it, and next thing you know, they get in a situation where you're going to do stuff like this, you better be plugged in. Amen. Those seven young men found out the hard way that it takes more than just passing by the church to have the power of the Holy Ghost in operation in their life. To be a real believer, you better get plugged in, you better get full, you better hold on, stay plugged in, play in church, nearly cost them their life. You can't play with this thing. You better get plugged in. Mm. Do you find it hard to find it's a serious thing to pray? Are you finding it difficult to read your Bible? Are you struggling with even making it to church? If you're not faithful in those functions, it's highly doubtful you're plugged into Jesus. Oh, you're plugged into your job. You didn't miss that. You're plugged into your money. You know how much you got. You're plugged into entertainment. You got your favorites. You plugged into yourself because you've been eating. You're clothed. Your worldly side is functioning. Your social life is functioning, but your spiritual battery is dead. I remember that was a phrase they used back in the 80s. Oh man, they're dead. New convert come in. He's on fire. Or they talk about it. Brother. Man, that guy's on fire. They're plugged in. Oh, oh no, they're dead. Man, Look at them. They just sit there. You want to know why people struggle to function in the power of God? It's as simple as you're, you're not plugged in. You've relied on a battery and it's gone dead. It's not that you can't function. It's not that you're not doing it. You're doing everything out there. But in order to do things for God, like he said in the beginning text, without me he can do. So if you sit in church and you're doing nothing, it's time to get plugged back in. That's why Timothy is told, the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Are, are you a part of the perilous times, or are you plugged in? Are you of those that are covetous, or are you plugged in? Are you a bolster of the things of this world, or are you plugged in? Are you proud of the things of this life? Or are you plugged in? Are you a blasphemer, disobedient, or are you plugged in? Are you unthankful or unholy, or are you plugged in? Are you without natural affection, a truth breaker, a false accuser, incontinent, fear, or are you 
plugged in. Are you hearing me? How well does your phone work when it's dead? How well does your car work when your battery's dead? Anybody ever thrown your phone away because it died? Anybody throw your car away because the battery died? You know why we don't? Because the fix is so easy. The remedy is so easy. Now, I know I said some things. I know that, man, I just... Just let me be. Yeah. Trust me, I don't want to deal with all of it either. Nope. But I want to help somebody. Don't get mad at the church. Get plugged in. Don't get mad at God. Get plugged in. Don't get upset at church, folks. Get plugged in. Don't, don't get mad at the preacher or the preaching. Get plugged in. Don't get mad at the word of God. Get plugged in. And the first thing you're going to hear, ah, that guy, this or that, I'm going to go to another church. And then you're going to cause the same problem over there. You're going to be the same. Nothing's gonna, I'm going to tell you something. The problem you're having isn't outside of you. It's in you. You need to get plugged in. Find time to do that. You'll find time to do everything else. But you don't have time for God. You got all these other things you're doing, but you can't make it. Let me tell you, Jesus spoke about that. And he said it plain. Matthew 16 and 26. For what is man, or what are you profited if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I run into people all the time. I hear, well, I really don't need you. I really don't have. And they want to make it personal between you and them. Oh, no, 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 you don't. This is between you and God. Jesus even said it. In fact, I'm going to take the power out of your mouth. No, Jesus said they haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. So he said it. Go argue with him about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you know what? I'm not going to always run around. Some of you are like, I'm not going to chase you down. Mm-mm. It ain't up. You know, well, he didn't call me. Did you call me? He didn't shake my hand. Did you shake mine? They're not praying for me. You praying for me? Well, I don't really need church. I don't read that in the Word of God. In fact, I read something else in Hebrews 10, 25. But we're going to go to the next verse over and we're going to see something. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Jesus just, God just made sure his word new. Hey, folks, we can't be afraid to say this to people. I know what manner you are. I want to be used in church. Man, just show up. Amen. Be faithful for a month. Amen. Please. Amen. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting. You know, it's an exhortation. I'm encouraging you. Get your backslid behind back in the church. You're about to be lost. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Anybody see some stuff going on in the world today? Anybody realize? I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to be business as usual ever again in the United States. And if they can't run with it when it was easy, if they couldn't make it all these last couple of years, they couldn't be faithful, You have some of you better put on your Holy Ghost boots and get in there and face, listen, you're fixing to be lost. You ripped my heart out for the last four years. You've done this for the last five. You, done, you better get real with this thing. But exhorting one another so much more as you see a day approaching. You know what that verse is saying? Get plugged in. Get plugged back in. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Verse 26 kind of puts a slap your mama type phrase on it. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Knowing better and not doing better is an indictment, not a phrase. 
there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So really, there's no surprise when we find ourselves depleted. We find ourselves run down. We find ourselves a little empty or even dead. I feel powerless. Listen, I, I, I get it. Paul makes a statement in that same chapter where he's talking about pray without ceasing. He gives us an, well, how to handle the dilemma. Are you ready? Because it's easy in this perilous times to run low. What do we do? First Thessalonians 5, we're going to read 16 through 24. Rejoice evermore. Wait a minute. Don't you see what's going on outside? We ain't going to focus on that. Can I say this? Heaven and earth are going to pass away. He's not saving this planet. He's not going to turn around and say, let me take the whole United States and just bring it right on up into heaven. Thank you. So I don't care what they do. I'm concerned about getting plugged in. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Get, get plugged in. Get plugged in. Get plugged in. Despise not prophesying. That includes preaching. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of you. Get to the house of God and the very God of peace. Sanctify you holy. Oh my God. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Let's stand. We talk about the promises, the access to power, the heritage of the Lord. With a frail hand, And a slow walk. An elder lady approached the front desk of an insurance office. The secretary looked up and asked how she could help her. With a trembling hand, she took from her well worn purse a very old policy and explained that regretfully she could no longer meet the premium. She explained that it was hard for her to get to work and what little she did get, it wasn't enough to clothe, feed her and keep a roof over her head. After quick investigation, the office secretary recognized that the policy was for a very large amount and very valuable. She instructed the older lady to, that, you know, this, to not pay the premium is an unwise move. To, to stop the payment would be a great loss. And so she asked her, have you consulted your husband about this decision? The older lady responded, my husband? I lost him three years ago. The secretary excused herself and stepped into the office close by. Immediately, the office manager comes out. People come out and the company officials went into action. They looked over the policy, searched records, made some phone calls, and discovered that she was indeed telling the truth. She had lost her husband three years ago. But what she didn't understand was that the policy was her husband's and that she was the beneficiary. The insurance company was obligated then 
to refund every payment she had made over the last three years of the overpaid premiums, plus the full amount for which the husband had insured himself in her favor. She had been living in squalor and struggling because she didn't understand the policy. The money she received was sufficient to keep her for the rest of her life. Church, those of you online, God has given us the greatest life insurance policy of all time. And it became due the moment to give us the power to overcome all power of the enemy. You don't have to struggle every day with the struggles and the issues of life. You are the beneficiary. Get plugged in. Get plugged in to the earnest of your inheritance. Get plugged in. 2 Corinthians 19 and 5 declares, thank God for the gift. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Don't be stumbling around in darkness and the weakness of those in the world that are lost and blind. God has given you access to everything that will keep you for the rest of your life. Paul instructed Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 6-9, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance of me. Listen, don't forget this, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in me. I'm putting on my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You know why people make dumb mistakes and do dumb stuff? The Holy Ghost keeps you from being dumb. Get plugged in and get your sound mind back. Get plugged in and get your love back. Get plugged in and get the power back. You're messing up because you're not plugged in. You're faltering because you've let the power go out. You no longer think church is important because you've neglected to plug in. goes on and delicately says be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony testimony this is of our Lord nor of me as prisoner anytime anybody gets embarrassed of the church let me tell you something you better get plugged back in anytime you think something out there is more important that's going on you better get plugged back in Paul's telling Timothy let me tell you something boy there's, there's a lot of things to, remember Demas, remember all that? You get plugged into this thing and you're, gonna say, you're not going to be embarrassed of me. You're not going to be embarrassed of your testimony. You're not going to be embarrassed of living for God. You're going to understand. Mm -hmm. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the, according to the, according to the power of God. Get plugged in, folks. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling you got someone in your life you need to walk up and clap, grab their hands sweetly pull them closer in her eyes you've neglected your holy calling you haven't plugged in in a while nobody likes to hear messages like this nobody likes to be told you're messing up on what's most important. But if Paul would take the time to tell Timothy, stir up the gift, son. Get plugged in, boy. Paul wasn't saying to be condemning. He was saying because he loved him. Listen, if you don't get plugged into this thing, it's only a matter of time before your battery blinks one last time and you're dead and trespasses and sins. Jesus, we need you, God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the opportunity right now that we can plug in. 
Lord, I, I, I've got to get plugged in because I've got to be that city on a hill. I've got to make sure that my light is on. I've got to make sure that I'm not sending confusion to anybody that they realize, wait a minute, I better get plugged into this God thing. He's not coming to save this planet. He's come to save people. He's come to save sinners. He come to save the likes of you and I. This world, heaven and earth will pass away. The world's governments and all that will go. But the word of God is forever. Listen, listen. I understand. We're, 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 there's something about we're going to weep. We want to cry. We want to. We want to see some people come in. But I want to. I, I want to invert this a little bit. You realize that Abraham was so plugged in that God said, "Wait a minute. I'm not going to hide what is about to happen." Abraham was so plugged in that he was able to talk to God about an entire city. Do you realize that you, if you get plugged into to Jesus, you get plugged into God, you can start praying for family. You can start praying, not with passivity, but with power, because you've been plugged in. You start looking at what Paul did. You start looking at those that turned the world upside down and asked why they got plugged in. I don't want you to walk around like we're beat, like we're, uh, uh we win this thing. I know what the book says. Get plugged in, get plugged in, get excited, get encouraged, and oh, wait a minute. I got this, I'm plugged in. Are you hearing me? All throughout scripture, anytime there were moments of great tragedy, there was someone like a David that walked in and said, that's okay. I'm plugged in. I'm plugged in. This church needs people plugged in because our world needs a church that's plugged in. Maybe you need to be like a David walk into your house saying, I'm going to be plugged in like never before. I'm going to be so violently plugged in, you ain't going to be able to handle it. Oh, Agrippa, I am not careful to answer you. I'm so plugged in. <laughs> Peter, Peter's so plugged in. Oh, man. You know, so many times people criticize. Can you imagine that moment that Peter stepped out of the boat? See, that's where most of us stop. Well, let me see how you do. Gee, look what happened to you. How far did he go? <laughs> like that. Did he fall? Well, how about this question? How did he get back in the boat? <laughs> he was plugged in. I walk and I walk. You saw me fall, but we always focus on that part. We don't realize how to get back in the boat. As soon as he got his eyes off of Jesus, save me. Okay. We're not powerless. We're powerful. We're plugged in. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Because trust me, God's going to back up his word. And whether they ever listen to you or not, they're all going to know. And they were plugged in. Amen.